Hi, my name is Pete Hahn, and thank you for watching this tutorial video. Be sure to visit www.hahn-tech.com for the full library of video tutorials. I hope this video increases your knowledge and helps you become more efficient with this topic, whether for home or work. Please support this channel by sharing these videos with your friends and colleagues. Okay, in today's video I've got a lot of ground to cover, so I'm going to try and squeeze it all in here. Uh, if I go a little fast, then hopefully you just uh, press the pause button and maybe do some replay. Uh, okay, this video was prompted by a request from one of the viewers. One of the viewers was asking about a previous video that I did, the one that I did on the Thinkorswim scan for the MACD and RSI squeeze. The indicator ended up being for the MACD and RSI, the squeeze is uh, done as a separate uh, study. So the request from the viewer was that in addition to showing oversold conditions, they wanted to know if I could convert the indicator to also show overbought conditions. In addition, they wanted to see if I could add an alert to the indicator. Well, once they requested that I add an alert, then quickly understood that they were using it on a live chart. Uh, because the alert is of no use on a scan and you could only use the alert on a live chart or uh, perhaps a watch list. I still haven't tested to see if it will work on a watch list. So anyhow, that's how this video came to be. That's how this indicator came to be. What you're looking at on your screens, I've got a weekly chart on the left, a daily chart on the right. The weekly chart, the indicator is set to show overbought conditions and the daily chart on the right is uh, set up to show oversold conditions. If you want to plot both of them in the same chart, simply add the indicator twice and set one to overbought and one to oversold. Okay, so there's a lot of moving pieces as I said. First, let's get in and show you exactly what it looks like in a live chart. So I'm going to bring up a live chart. It's going to be a 15 minute chart on the right side and I'm going to bring up the S&P E-mini futures. Okay, so I've got the on-demand feature turned on. I hit the play button. And remember, this first video section is showing how the indicator operates when it's set to trigger an alert on a live bar. Okay, this bar is about to close, and the next bar is the one that generates the signal. Watch and see what happens as the bar closes. You see we have a signal. On the chart, a bubble is plotted, overbought. We also have in the upper left a message center indicating that the indicator has displayed an alert. So now we're going to jump forward a little bit to 1154 because I want you to see that the indication on a live bar can change as the live bar is continuing to update. Notice the close has now gone high enough that the MACD histogram has gone higher and the signal disappears and the bar changes from gray back to green back to gray and back to green as that close hovers around the point where the signal could be good or it could be bad so I want you to see now as we jump forward a little bit towards the end of this bar there we go we got about 10 seconds to go before this bar closes and indeed it eventually closes with a valid signal however this bar could have easily closed without a valid signal so that is the hazard of using the indicator in a live bar situation. You get an advanced notice, but that notice can vanish. Now I've reset the charts and I'm going to update the study. And I'll click the gear icon here and we'll scroll down in the parameters till we get to the section where we change the alert on parameter. We're going to change it to closed bar. So now it's going to require a signal to be locked in with the bar close before it will trigger an alert. So go ahead and hit play. Okay, so this is the bar that is eventually going to generate the signal. Notice that it changes gray, but there is no alert and there is no chart bubble indicating an oversold condition. So let's forward this over to about 11.59 so that, no, I'm gonna do it to 11.54 instead. So here you can see the bar has changed from gray back to green, indicating that the signal is not locked in yet, and it's sort of coming and going, you know, it's fading in and out. We don't know whether this is going to be a valid signal until this bar closes. So let's jump forward a little bit and see if we can get towards the end of this bar and watch how the indicator behaves under this setting. Okay, we're down to the end of the bar, 
I've uh, got it playing at regular speed now. And watch what happens. So now we get a signal. An alert is generated only when the signal is locked in and the bar has officially closed with a signal that is locked in. Okay, so now you see the difference between those two settings. Very important that you understand that and how to apply it. Okay, now that you've seen how the indicator performs on a live chart, I want to get into the parameters, the settings of the indicator. I want to show you how it works. There's a lot of moving pieces in this indicator, and as I mentioned previously, I want to make sure you understand these before I post the link for you to download this indicator from my Google Drive. On the right-hand pane, I'll select Studies and click Edit Studies. And you can see the indicator is Chart MACD RSI. You click the gear icon and that opens up the parameters. The first three parameters are the settings for the MACD and then you have the setting for the MACD average type. If you scroll through these parameters, now I've got the RSI length is in here. These are all just standard values, by the way. Uh, I've got the RSI price, RSI average type, and then the overbought and oversold levels. Those levels will impact how the indicator plots. I've got a look back period and that simply says if I've got the MACD two bar pivot how far back should the indicator look to find an overbought or oversold condition. The default is set to four. These last two will determine how the indicator plots. We've got an oversold and overbought and we have alert on closed bar or live bar and you saw that demonstrated in the video so you understand the impact of that value and how you can change that. We'll press OK and OK. Now I told you that you can add two of these indicators to the same chart if you want to plot both the oversold and the overbought together. So on this chart on the right hand I've got it set up to plot the oversold signals. So we go to studies, edit studies, and you can see that that indicator appears only once. So I'll go ahead and add it from my list of user-defined studies. And now I've got it in here twice. So I'll hit the gear icon and then scroll down and make sure that it is set to overbought. And then I can select whether I want it on a live bar or a closed bar. Since the other indicator is set to closed bar, I'll go ahead and set this one likewise press OK, apply, and OK. There's a little warning up here and you don't have to worry about that warning. The warning is simply stating that I've got two different studies are trying to change the color of the signal bar and I've ensured that the indicator is written in a way that you're not going to get an overlap. Uh, it's only going to have uh, either the oversold or the overbought is going to change the color of the price. We'll scroll to the left here and see if there are any overbought signals. There we go, there's one. And there's another. And if you look down at these lower studies at the MACD, you've got the two bars, you know, you got a two bar pivot, and you had the RSI in the overbought level. And the same thing with this signal here, you've got a two bar pivot on the MACD, and you had the RSI in the overbought condition. Okay, so that's all I wanted to show you on setting up the indicator and installing it on your charts. If you want to see how to download this indicator and install it on your Thinkorswim platform, I'll link that video up above and that would be the display name of saved chart. That was a video that I did several months ago and it will show you how to take an indicator, install it on your Thinkorswim platform. Next, I will go ahead and post a link so that you can download this indicator from my Google Drive. Okay, don't go anywhere yet because I've got another item to show you. In addition to building this indicator into a price chart indicator, I also have a scan version of this same indicator. 
I've adapted the scan from the original video so that it can scan for either overbought or oversold conditions. And I'm going to show that to you now. We'll go to Studies, Edit Studies, and from my User Defined Studies, I'll scroll down to where my scans are. Scan MACD RSI. And it plots in the bottom. I'll hit Apply and OK. And we can scroll through here till we find an indication. You can see right now the indicator is set up to find overbought conditions. Okay, so we'll scroll that back over to the right and we'll go to studies, edit studies, and now I'm going to click on the scroll icon. And down at the bottom of the lines of code, you'll see that there are two plots for the scan. And you can only use one at a time. So we'll uncomment this one. We'll get an error message until we put a comment mark on the second one. And then we'll hit apply and OK and hit OK. And you can see that now we've flipped it around. It's also showing the oversold conditions. OK, so this is an indicator that can be used in your custom scan. It will work uh, just like the other one that I showed you in the previous video, which I will link to now because in that original video, I showed you how to build a custom scan from it using the scan tool in the Thinkorswim platform. And so if you want to use this new indicator to do a scan for both oversold and overbought, you can set it up so that you can run those scans and, uh, and get that done. Okay, hope this was helpful. If anybody is interested in the code and how the code was written and how you can modify it so that you can put your own uh, custom indicators, let's say you wanted to do one for stochastic or momentum index or price channel or Bollinger Bands, you name it. If you guys are interested in learning how to work in the code and, and modify these things, I would really be excited to, uh, to hear from you and I would be really happy to do some videos on that. I just want to make sure that you guys are interested. I know a lot of people see code and they get headaches and they, you know, nosebleeds and, you know, yelling and screaming goes on. I've experienced all that. Trust me, I know. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, if you guys are interested, boy, I'll show you uh, how to do that. And uh, you'll, be, uh, you'll be interested how, how really simple it is. It really is pretty easy once you figure it out. So anyhow, hope this was helpful. Take care, everyone. Thank you for watching this tutorial video. Be sure to visit www.hondashtech.com for the full library of tutorials. I hope this video increases your knowledge and helps you become more efficient with this topic, whether for home or work. Please support this channel by sharing these videos with your friends and colleagues. Thanks and take care.